That closes out today's trading day. Again, all three of the major averages ending in the red following that Fed decision that we got a 50 basis point hike, raising it the rate of rates for 2023 to 5.1%. That was a median forecast from Fed officials. Dow closing off 142 points, the worst performer of the three major averages, the NASDAQ, off just about three quarters of a percent. We want to bring in Jake Jolly, Bank of New York Mellon Senior Investment Strategist. Jake, it's great to have you here. On set. So lots to digest in terms of what we just heard from Fed Chair Jay Powell. I want to play for you, though, a bite about what we heard in terms of the jobs market and what needs to happen with employment in order to get a better handle on inflation. Let's take a listen. Despite the slowdown in growth, the labor market remains extremely tight with the unemployment rate near a 50 year low. Job vacancies still very high and wage growth elevated. Job gains have been robust, with employment rising by an average of 272,000 jobs per month over the last three months. Although job vacancies have moved below their highs and the pace of job gains has slowed from earlier in the year, the labor market continues to be out of balance, with demand substantially exceeding the supply of available workers. So, Jake, from an investor perspective, in terms of what this means for equities, obviously a more hawkish Fed, something that investors have been a little bit concerned about. What's your big takeaway? Yeah, so I think there are two things that really stood out for me today. You know, we got the 50 basis points. That was very much expected. But I think what was a bit surprising and we'll see kind of how the market um, you know, interprets it in the days ahead, was that the summary of economic projections leaned much more hawkish than was expected. Um, so when you look at where the dot plot actually landed, you know, Prior to this meeting, the last September meeting, we were looking at most Fed officials thinking it was below 5%. Now most are above 5%. And you got to remember that they made that decision after seeing the last two inflation reports, which were both better than expected. So despite sort of two better than expected inflation reports, the expectations are still that rates are going to have to be even higher and, and hold them for much longer. And a real emphasis mm-hmm. on the labor market, on wage growth and, and that services sector. What do you anticipate in terms of terminal rate will get the job done in the words of Powell? Well, I think around 5% makes sense, right? Because when we look at sort of what they think of as being a restrictive level, they are looking at core PCE inflation. And right now that's running about 5%. So sort of getting to that level, you're starting to get into positive real uh, Fed funds rate. And that is, I think, where they're going to want to sit and see how the economy reacts. When are we going to see some movement in the labor market, though? I mean, he's I, look, I am skeptical. I, I am one in that camp of Andrew Levin, who joins us earlier, that thinks we're talking about 6 percent before we can actually put a dent in the labor market. What do you see? Yeah, I mean, it's taking much longer than everyone expected. Right. And I think as we move closer to 2023, um, you know, we're looking at sort of the balance of risk, right? The Fed obviously wants to avoid over tightening, but they know and they've been sort of vocal about the fact that there is a greater risk to doing too little. So that's why as we move into 2023 and we're not seeing the labor market weaken, the Fed's going to have to remain very restrictive in its policy. So with with the terminal rate higher, obviously, than what we had initially anticipated going back to September, what does that mean just in terms of how aggressive you think the Fed is likely going to be at its next meeting? Are we talking 50 basis points, or do you think we might see a bit of a slowing here to 25? Well, I think that was one of the more hawkish things that came out of the press conference Mm -hmm. was that he was not willing to commit to 25 or to stepping down to 25 basis points at the next meeting, right? There was that question. He basically said, we're going to wait until the incoming data. And that sort of, you know, wait and see approach, the market doesn't like that uncertainty. So you did start to see a bit of a down leg when when that um, uh, was uh, information was getting processed into the market. Um, But I think the reason we're getting sort of this reaction of, you know, maybe not quite as bad as, as people would have expected, given how hawkish the the, uh, projections were, is the fact that we are on the back of two better than expected inflation reports. So on the one hand, inflation does seem to be coming down faster than we would expect. Powell and the Fed is trying to push back on that and sort of temper the optimism, I think. So given that complicated dynamic, what's your advice for investors in this environment? (laughs) Well, looking to 2023, we think that bonds do have the edge um, in the first part of the year. Um, And the main reason for that is that, you know, 
unlike the beginning of this year, yields are at just a much higher level than they were. So when you think about sort of the total return from your bond portfolio, the income side is much, much better. So even though we are likely to see some headwinds in terms of rates potentially going higher from here, the total return is looking much better because of that, that high income that you're getting from your, your bonds. All right, excellent stuff. Unfortunately, I have to leave it there. Jake Jolly, thanks for being here in studio. Good to Got see you, my friend.